Hey guys, Dead Slutter Magic here, and I came across a card that I just had to include in Overlooked But Awesome because this card is pretty cool. I'd say it's Overlooked because it was from a fairly unpopular set, and it's a mythic, yet it's only about $5. I mean, still obviously on people's radar, but you gotta wonder what the minimum floor for a mythic from a not well opened set that's still modern legal actually is. Also, people tend to not find it in the search because it doesn't always uh, fit the parameters that they're looking for, even though it does. It's kind of the same problem as um, really good like red Eldrazi spells that have Devoid not showing up when you search red because they're not technically red even though let's be honest they're red. Also this card is just so good because you know it's moderately okay early game and then late game it's absolutely amazing. It's also completely self-contained and does not require interaction with any other card and I love that. As soon as you need one spell to meet up with another spell, it just isn't going to. They are going to be 50 cards apart in your deck. It <laughs> never fails. So I present to you Kargon Dragonlord from Rise of the Eldrazi. Now, a lot of people really didn't like the level up mechanic. I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it does make your opponent lean too heavily on removal, where if you have four of them on the field and they destroy three of them, you're just going to pump up the remaining one into something that they can't deal with. So you almost need like a flawless level of uh, board wiping, I guess, for lack of a better term. And if you don't, they're just going to keep coming at you. I mean, they could be top decking absolute garbage, just nothing but mountains and wonderful. Okay, so full disclosure, I did not play when leveling up was legal in standard. But I really, really like it. When I saw it, I thought, that's neat. It's dynamic. It's interesting. It has like an RPG element to it, which the game was always lacking. And it's just neat. It's just like energy. I saw it and I'm like, yeah, a, a unit of something you can do in a turn and spend on stuff that isn't mana. The game needed that. And then Mark Rosehunter screwed it up by letting uh, nobody interact with it and letting three color be way too easy to accomplish. In fact, four color as well. So if you're not familiar with leveling up, um, you pay whatever it says for the level up cost, and it's basically like level up colon, and then you put a level counter on it, and that indicates what level it is. Unfortunately, nowhere in the rulings could I actually find if it starts at level zero or automatically at level one, so I'm going to say zero. Thanks, wizards, for making it so that not only can I not read the card and figure out how it works, but I can't um, look up how the card works either. Fantastic. No wonder people didn't like this mechanic. But anyway, okay, I pay one red and it's level one. There you go. I can, of course, immediately pay another red and level it up again to level two. And then if I get it to level four, it'll become a four four with flying. Oh, and that's, of course, permanently because we're talking about level counters, which are, you know, always on the creature. Oh, and by the way, if your opponent makes a copy of this card, uh, it loses its current level because, well, when you copy stuff, you don't get the counters on it. So if you've got a level 8 and they clone it, they've got a level 0. And you've got an 8-8 eight, eight flyer with trample, with fire breathing, basically, and they have a 2-2 two, two on the ground doing nothing. Now the huge, huge key to this to make it remotely fair is level up only as a sorcery. And I hate abilities that are only usable as sorceries because there's no ambush, there's no threat, there's no nothing. It's just, oh here, take this action. But that's how this is supposed to be. If you had five mana open and they're all red and then somebody's going to swing but then they know that you could level this up five times and make it a flying 4-4 four, four, and then block, they're never going to swing, and if they don't swing, then you never have to use the mana on it, and any time at your opponent's end step that you um, have any mana left over, you could automatically level it up, which means within a turn or two, this thing would just be gigantic. So that is how they kept it fair. You can only do it on your turn, and you can only do it during your two main phases. So here's why I love this creature. Um, one, it can become an 8-8 flying trampler for, well, we'll just say two mana, even though that's not really how it works. And two, it's really good on turn two, it's really good on like turn four at level four to seven, and it's really good on turn 20, we'll say. I mean, it just gets better and it scales with the progression of the game and the power level increase that comes with having additional mana available. And third, it does it without having to fetch equipment or aura from your deck, or I shouldn't even say fetch it, just draw it in the first place, or play it, or do anything. And it's almost impossible to counter the leveling up ability, and even if they did with like disallow or something, you could still just use it immediately again. Just burn your mana and then, oh cool, I've got another mana, or do it next turn. So this card and most other leveling cards are amazing. 
Now, like I said, if you ran a search on the Gatherer and said, show me flying creatures with at least four toughness, that's what my deck needs, you will not find this. And that's why it kind of flies below other people's radar. I guess the pun wasn't really intended on that one. I usually say pun intended, but I'd be lying. That, that one was an accident. It's because it's a flying creature, people, in case you missed the joke. I mean, you know, just in case the joke <laughs> flew over your head. That pun was extremely intended. So think about it, you throw this out for two, and then eight mana later you've got an 8-8 eight, eight flying trampler, and let's say at that point you have four mountains on the field, which I think is very reasonable and doable. Okay, well it has an ability that most people call fire breathing, which is you pay one red and give it plus one attack with no uh, toughness boost. You know, because an 8-8 flying trampler wasn't big enough already, and I mean, they have made really, really powerful creatures have like a two-cost fire breathing. This is still just one red, and if you've got it that size, you've proven that you can generate red mana. I mean, everything just flows. I mean, I, I was going to say it has card synergy, but that usually implies that more than one card is involved. This card is synergy with itself, and that's why I love it. It's so reliable and practical and scalable and just everything. I love it. I guess the only complaint I have is uh, they didn't leave room for some snarky or epic, heroic, awesome sounding flavor text. But uh, other than that, I love this card. Also, if you don't exactly have your uh, set symbols memorized, this is legal in Modern, it's legal in Legacy and Vintage, and it's legal in Commander. I could see this being somewhat competitive in Modern, because, I mean, if it's too small to deal with the Tarmogoyf, you let it through once, and then you just go all in on leveling this thing up, and now it's a 4-4, and it's probably still too weak to deal with the Tarmogoyf, and then you give it a couple more levels, okay, now it's like a game-winning level threat, and it can kill a Tarmogoyf. Terrible example, because it wouldn't have Vigilance, so you wouldn't be able to swing anyway, you'd really have to stop that Tarmogoyf. I mean, Modern has like 10,000 unique cards that are legal in the format. I doubt this would be anybody's like first choice, but it's good. And especially in Commander, where you just throw this out early game and people are like, okay, I don't want to waste a removal spell on it. But then once you've uh, pumped all kinds of mana into it, wow, watch out. I mean, an 8-8 Flying Trample Dragon, that is amazing. So I do wish it was a little bit under five bucks, but uh, I don't know, you might be able to trade for it if somebody has it. I know uh, I've, I've seen it in one or two people's trade binders myself personally. So hopefully you can find a place for this amazing epic card, and uh, if you want to look at the rest of the levelers, they're pretty much all from this block anyway, so uh, check them out on The Gatherer, and I will see you guys next video.